different studio. Pick up your brush today. Welcome to the Ink Different Studio. This is Fiona. I would like to also welcome you to our Chinese calligraphy course, a captivating journey into one of the most ancient and respected forms of artistic expression. Chinese calligraphy is not just an art. It is profound cultural heritage, recognized globally for its artistic and historical value. This course will offer you an opportunity to delve into the elegance and depth of Chinese calligraphy, exploring its unique blend of written language and visual art. But this is not all. Chinese calligraphy is renowned for its therapeutic benefits, enhancing calmness, reducing stress, and improving mindfulness through the rhythmic motion in brush movements. These benefits make it not only a cultural exploration, but also a practice in mindfulness and personal tranquility. Our course will feature the classic Chinese text, the Thousand Character Classic, Qian Zi Wen. This text is not only a cornerstone for Chinese calligraphy training, but also a rich source of history and philosophy, making it perfect for both beginners and seasoned enthusiasts. The Qian Zi Wen, translated as the Thousand Character Classic, is a unique Chinese poem used as a premiere for teaching Chinese characters to children. It is renowned for its ingenious composition, wherein none of its 1,000 characters are repeated, Composed by Zhou Xingsi during the Southern and Northern Dynasty around the 6th century, the text is not just a linguistic tool, but also a collection of moral and philosophical teachings. The Thousand Character Classic has been used traditionally in Confucian teaching, providing a fundamental literacy resource that also encapsulates essential elements of Chinese culture and wisdom. Each line consists of four characters, with the lines grouped into sections for easier memorization. The content covers a wide range of topics, from the basics of the cosmos and the natural world to the principles of human conduct as the fundamental of statecraft. This text not only helps in learning Chinese characters, but also in appreciating the depth and breadth of Chinese literary tradition and cultural values. It has been an important educational text in China and other Eastern Asian countries, influenced by classical Chinese culture. Join us as we trace the strokes of history and artistry in our journey. Whether you're looking to broaden your artistic skills or immerse yourself in cultural heritage, this course promises to be both educational and enriching. Also, do not forget to follow this channel for our regular course updates. To create a comfortable and relaxing environment for our course, start by ensuring the room is quiet, with good lighting, a stable table, and comfortable chairs. Change into comfortable clothing and lay out the equipment, which I will introduce you shortly. The brush requirements can vary depending on the script. For both seal and clerical scripts, the best brushes are those with soft bristles that hold a gorgeous amount of ink, making gold hair brushes an ideal choice. However, for regular script, the same type of brushes used for seal and clerical scripts may be challenging for beginners because they are too soft. Writing certain strokes that require bursts of strength will demand significant practice. For regular script, we need a brush with a stronger core where, while still capable of holding a good amount of ink. Therefore, for regular practice, a mixed hair brush featuring weasel hair at the core and gold hair around it will be preferable. For writing very small characters, pure weasel hair brushes are the best option. As for running and cursive scripts, a brush with a relatively long head is ideal. This allows the brush head to move freely on the paper, enabling smooth, flowing lines. A mixed hairbrush can still be an easier option for beginners. If you are a complete beginner and don't wish to invest too much in brushes, 
I recommend this well-balanced, price-friendly brush set available in my shop, which can satisfy most of your needs, especially seal, clerical, and regular scripts. If you specifically prefer practicing running and cursive scripts, this other brush set will also work nicely. You can simply scan the QR codes on the screen. However, if you have specific preferences, feel free to contact me directly for personalized recommendations. I'll be happy to help. That said, I sincerely need to emphasize the importance of brush quality. I wholeheartedly recommend investing in good quality brushes, as the selection of brush hair, material, and the treatment of the brush handles are critical factors that can make a significant difference in the brush's performance and ease of use. Using poor quality brushes from the beginning may lead to the development of bad habits, which could hinder your progress later on. For calligraphy practice, brushes are your most essential tools, even more important than the papers you will use. On the screen, you will see a list of the necessary supplies. Please make sure to prepare them accordingly so we can begin our calligraphy journey. Also, feel free to scan the QR code to visit my site where you will find a thoughtfully curated section of art supplies, books, and other valuable resources. Explore everything you need to enhance your artistic journey. Today, we're going to continue with the learning and writing of the Thousand Character Classic. Starting from this session, I've decided to use only traditional Chinese characters in the slides. I believe this change will be more convenient, and I hope you appreciate it. The character Long first appeared in the Shang Dynasty's Oracle Bone script and bronze inscriptions. Its ancient form resembled a giant flying dragon. The original meaning of dragon, Long, referred to a mythical, supernatural creature, characterized by a long body, horns, scales, and claws. It would ascend to the heavens, dive into the water, and summon clouds and rain. The dragon is not a real animal that exists in nature. It's entirely a product of human imagination. The character Long in Oracle Bone script had different forms in its early and later stages. The bronze script version is similar to the Oracle Bone script, but includes the addition of sharp teeth in the dragon's mouth. The Warring States period script and seal script show significant changes becoming more complex and divided into two components. The part resembling the dragon's head and mouth in the Oracle Bone script and the bronze script was replaced with yue, which also represents rou, which means flesh, and additional elements were added to the right side. The clerical script used in Han Dynasty squared the character's form based on the seal script, evolving into the traditional character long. The dragon is the totem of Chinese people, and also their symbol. The Chinese people refer to themselves as descendants of the dragon. The dragon holds a central position in Chinese culture, symbolizing good fortune, vitality, and bravery. During the feudal era, the dragon became a symbol of the emperor. Historical sites, particularly imperial places, often feature dragon motifs as the dragon was an exclusive symbol of the emperor. The examples include the dragon's robe, dragon throne, dragon bed, etc. The nine dragon wall in the Forbidden City is a symbol of the emperor's authority. The dragon is also used metaphorically to refer to extraordinary individuals or heroes. The character Shi first appeared in the Shang Dynasty's Oracle Bone script. Shi originally referred to a military unit in ancient times, and from this, it was extended to mean army. In Shang and Zhou dynasties, Shi represented the largest military unit, which consisted of many soldiers. Therefore, it also came to mean a group of people. Later, it referred to an official title, especially for those responsible for educating people. From there, it evolved to mean teacher or someone with specialized skills or knowledge, and it further extended to mean a model or example to follow. There are various interpretations of the original meaning of shi 
based on different understandings of its form. Some interpret the left side of this ancient character as a bow, and the right side as an arrow hitting a person's foot. Together, this suggests the meaning of the power of a bow and arrow forming the authority of the army. In the Shang and Zhou dynasties, Shi was the largest military unit, comprising 2,500 men. Another interpretation suggests that the oracle bone form of Shi is a standing representation of the character Qiu, which means hell. This explanation suggests that ancient armies often camped near hills during expeditions, and the standing Qiu, hell, was used to represent the concept of Shi army. The bronze script form of Shi continued the structure from oracle bone script, adding the component on the right side. In ancient times, this right side component represented many or a group, meaning something that surrounds or encircles, implying that an army was a large group gathered together. The seal script version of Shi retained the bronze script form without much change in structure. A military commander is both the leader and educator of soldiers, so the word Shi was extended to mean teacher. A military commander or teacher is seen as a role model for those who lead or educate, which is why the character Shi also came to signify a model or someone to emulate. Huo, fire is a pictographic character. The form of Huo in the oracle bone script resembles the shape of flames and light radiating from a burning object. In bronze script, the character Huo is composed of the pictograph of a flame with two dots which represents something within the flame spreading outward. The entire character symbolizes something emitting light and heat in all directions, giving rise to the meaning of fire. In Warring States script, the shape of Huo was simplified into four strokes, though it still retained the appearance of light and flames rising upward. The small seal script followed the structure of the Warring States version, and the regular script form of Huo, which we use today, has continued this lineage. The character Di first appeared in the Shang Dynasty's oracle bone script and bronze inscriptions. Its ancient form likely depicted a structure of bundled wood being burned as an offering to heaven, reflecting the ancestor worship and sacrificial practices of early people. Another interpretation suggests that its ancient form resembled a flower calyx. The basic meaning of Di is the heavenly emperor or supreme deity, and it could also refer to former kings. After the Zhou dynasty and before the Warring States period, it specifically referred to individuals with great moral cultivation and exceptional achievements. After the Qin dynasty, it became an abbreviation for Huangdi, which means emperor. In summary, Long Shi, Long refers to the dragon, a highly significant mythical creature in Chinese culture. Dragons are associated with power, strength, authority, and are often seen as protectors and symbols of imperial power. Shi means master or leader. In ancient times, it was often used to refer to a military leader or commander. In this context, Long Shi refers to Fu Xi, also known as Tai Hao. According to the Zuo Zhuan, the Tai Hao clan used the dragon as its totem and thus became known as the dragon master and took the dragon as its symbol. Fu Xi is a legendary figure in Chinese mythology, credited with creating the eight trigrams, Ba Gua, and other advancements in early civilization. His association with the dragon symbolizes wisdom, power, and leadership. Huo Di Huo means fire, which in Chinese mythology is one of the key elements. Fire is associated with the sun, warmth, and the summer season in Chinese cosmology. Di means emperor or sovereign. It refers to a ruler of high status, particularly an emperor or a deity-like figure. Huo Di refers to Yan Di, one of the legendary five emperors who ruled with virtue of fire.
symbolizing the warmth and life-giving power of the sun and fire. Yan Di is often linked with agriculture and medicine, particularly in his role as the god of agriculture. Another interpretation suggests that Huo Di refers to Sui Ren Shi, the mythical figure credited with discovering fire by drilling wood, thus introducing the use of fire to early human society. Both figures represent the vital importance of fire in the development of civilization. Chinese history has deep mythological roots, so the ancient sages often straddled the line between gods and humans, or even originally considered deities. In Chinese history, Fu Xi is regarded as the male ancestor. It is believed that through his union with his sister Nuwa, humanity was born. According to legend, one day, a divine creature with a horse's head and a dragon's body emerged from the Yellow River. Its body was covered with curly hair as well as patterns and spots. Fu Xi was deeply inspired by this and created the Eight Trigrams. Ba Gua invented fishing nets and named his officials after the dragon. Because of this, Fu Xi was also called the Dragon Master, marking the beginning of the fishing and hunting era in China. Later, a tribal leader rose to prominence. He used the fire to name his officials, earning him the title of Yan Di, Fire Emperor. He is also known as Shen Nong because he tasted various herbs invented farming tools, and taught people how to cultivate crops, identify medical plants, and make pottery. This marked the beginning of China's agricultural era. In the context of Thousand Character Classic, Long Shi Huo Di refers to mythical or legendary rulers associated with the dragon and fire. These figures symbolize power, wisdom, and civilization highlighting the connection between ancient Chinese leaders and natural forces of the world. Now, let us explore how these characters are written in the three scripts. I'll start by practicing with you on the water writing cloth, and then I'll demonstrate using ink and raw rice paper.
As we wrap up our session, I hope you found it enjoyable and insightful. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to share your thoughts, don't hesitate to leave me a message. If you find this session informative, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on our future sessions. Discover, learn, and create with us as we bring the best of Chinese culture to the world. Join us at Ink Different Studio, where art meets heritage. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time. For more information, check us out at inkdifferentstudio.com.